Hey, what's happening, everybody? This is Captain RL with Bottom Fishing 24 7. And today, for you guys looking for big bull reds, something to do in the fall when it's a little rough, can't get offshore, whatever it may be, to have some fun on these big bull reds in most places near the inlets. So I'll show you where to start looking on your GPS, on your mapping. Doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to have Platinum Plus or anything like that mapping. You don't have to have any kind of crazy mapping as long as you have a basic you know, charting or mapping cartography in your GPS, the brand doesn't matter. I'll show exactly what to look for to catch these big bull reds. Stand by. Here we go. All right, guys. One thing to remember here, these fish, the reds, the bull reds, what we're talking about, they stay in this offshore area. In this area here, this is in Brunswick, Jekyll Island off the coast of Georgia. 30 foot deep water. That's the ocean all out in here. And what those fish do, the right being the east on this screen, the left being the west or toward land in shore. They're gonna be out here in this deeper water, okay? Bottom of the end coming, those fish are gonna to start to move to the west. And that's what I wanna show you here. And this is gonna be the, the, the prevailing factor for any area. You don't need spots. You just need to be able to read your GPS. Let me show you what they do here. Because they're going to come to the, to the highest point, shallowest point from deeper water to stop and see what's going on. And there's going to be bait there. And there's going to be crabs there and other things going on there when they come from this offshore area over here to the right that I'm showing you. They move from ocean to land when the income in September, October, November, full moons especially. And right before the moons is when you want to fish these areas and get to moving in on them and start learning them. If you don't already know them in your area, you probably got a good idea where the first bars come to, the first high, high parts that are breaking or where shallow water is. So if we take a look in here, we've come from offshore out here and we're moving in, moving in, moving in and bam, we hit five foot of water right here. You can see all the, just a few spots. I don't need many because of the whole, see this contour, this whole contour here it holds it holds fish because it's marking a bar, and there's there, there's just there's there's fish all over it on the incoming tide. First of the incoming, this is where I'm gonna start. They're moving in and they're gonna hit right here first. There's gonna be manhaden. There's gonna be probably some mullet. There's gonna definitely be blue crabs, sand crabs, leopard crabs. Look at this contour all along it. That's the first thing they're gonna run into after coming in from the middle of nowhere. They come in this nice shallow bar. There's gonna be plenty of food for them. And this is where they're going to stop for their first feed right here. This is going to happen in this area. Probably the full moon of September, you're going to, you're going to start seeing this happen. And, they, and they're just staging up at that point for the October actual spawn. And this is the areas they're going to come to, to to feed. So the first area you come to that's shallow from offshore, that's where you're going to catch your reds. And I know the snook work a, you know, in a similar way in Stewart and areas like that. Um, but, but, but reds kind of operate a little bit different, but the first bar shallow water you come to in some places, it's a jetty that you come to. It's just deep, deep, deep. Then there's a jetty. Boom. Well, that's where they'll be. But in this, in these, in most, in most inlets, most areas have a bar off of them. And that's where those fish are going to be. You got to decide if it's safe enough to fish for you. First of all, in these shallow areas like this, if it's safe enough for you to get into you want, to, you, want, you want to get into those areas and you want to fish a chunk mullet out of there. I'd rather have a, a chunk mullet than anything for any of these areas. Okay, so bottom of the end coming. This is where I'm at. Then as the tide moves in, I'm going to move in about, that's, this is about a mile between spots. I'm going to move into this bar. I don't have a lot of spots on that bar. I don't, I don't need them because I know that bar is covered with redfish on the end coming. Midways in, this is where they're going to be. Bar starts getting covered up. There's two or three foot of water on it at the most. And, it, and it's just going to be covered in reds. You can throw up in that break. You won't see the reds usually. Not usually you won't. You won't see anything. You're not going to see them tailing. It's too rough up there most of the time. It doesn't matter. They're, they're in there. That The break is stirring up those crabs off the bottom. And those, those fish don't feed off site anyhow. The dirtier the water, the better. It don't matter. They are, they are, they are feeding on their sense of smell. And they come to it, and they're going to eat it. And in that break, is, is just is a great place that, that things get hung up in it and get tormented and confused is bait. And crabs, too. Even though that's their homes, leopard crabs and blue crabs especially get churned off the bottom. 
on these bars, these shallow areas like this. And reds love to eat them. And they know where those places are, and they're going to go to them. And by the way, they come within 25 to 50 yards of where they did the year before. They got a built-in GPS that's better than anything we've got. And they come to all these shallow areas every single year, year after year. They can be 35, 45 years old and more, these big bull reds. So we'll be real careful with them. But back to the charting. So midways, we'll hit this bar. We'll fish, fish it out pretty good. And then as it gets even higher up toward, the, toward high tide, I'm going to fish this longshore bar that's even closer in. It's about another half a mile in from that other bar I just showed you there to the right with that 417 on it. We're going to fish right there on this bar. Um, I might fish a couple spots on it. If I see bait movement, you know, mullet, mullet jumping or pogies flipping, whatever it might be, I'm going to get safely anchored, and I'm going to sling it up in the shallowest area I can get to that I've seen bait. And even over here on the south side of this channel, this channel moves a lot of water in from the ocean. That's a key factor is the channel because that's moving your fresh ocean water in there, and it's coming in at a higher rate of speed. So this bar here absolutely gets covered with reds because of it. You look off to the right at that, at that deep water, it pours in over this bar, traps bait in here. It's a big tornado of bait and crabs that come in here from right over here. They're moving in, boom. You get in here in a foot or two of water. So this is something you fish on the mid to high tide. This is an area that, that you'll want to focus on. Spend a lot of time in and learn every single inch of the bar and learn how it works and when the fish are there and at what tide and write it down. Can't forget it, man. You can't try to remember it. You got to write it down. The barometer, the water temp, everything. The depth, the coordinates, anything you need to record, record it because it's going to be the same every single year. These fish do the same things and go to the same places at the same time, same tides. Now, they, every year can be different on the number of fish that come in. But those, those spots are going to, I promise you, they're going to hold bull reds. And I mean big bull reds. So all these areas here that you see on the screen are good. And what they have in common is they're the first shallow area coming from deeper water. As the tide moves in, they move in with it. And that's why they're, they're in these shallow areas. And it's easier for them to feed in those shallow areas. And that's just the nature of a big bull red fish is what they do. All right, we'll move down south to Jekyll Island and Cumberland Island, which is just above the Florida line, literally a few miles. Um, let me get these. These tracks are kind of in my way here. Let's get these. Let's get these tracks off of here. Come on now. There we go. Okay, good to go. Now let me zoom out. You can see same depths, like 25, 30 foot is offshore water for for this area. Boom, first bar they come to, bam. You see all these all these numbers along the edge of this bar? It comes from 20 to nine, 25 to 9 feet right there on that edge. That contour is around that bar. All, you see all, all these tarpon spots are also bull red spots. They, they operate kind of the same way. And the fact is that bait moves with the current because it moves here about two knots. They move in from offshore, the bait does, and the fish follow it. And it all gets wrapped up in these bars. And, it, and it, it kind of gets confused. It starts running a little harder. There's rips everywhere, and they get hung up in it. And they'll move all the way across these bars. As the tide's coming in, the bait will keep moving with the tide, the, 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 the bait that doesn't get eaten, and it'll move on in closer, moving into the west here. There's, here's another mile or so inwards. I got, I got redfish numbers all on this bar. Don't really need them, but, you know, you tend to hit the, the man overboard button or the save button when you, when you find spots. But – all in here, a lot of deep water running across these, running up to these bars and running across the bars too, as well. A lot of deep water here surrounding these bars. That's what they like, deep water coming into nothing. A lot of breakers around, got to be careful. But this is just, just how they operate. Now inshore, this river here, this is when you when you look at this channel coming out. This this channel comes in here from deep water. It's it's feeding in good, you know, good clean incoming tide at the top of the tide. Look how far this channel goes out. Okay, it's a it's a it's a it's a perfect feed of ocean water incoming straight in to this river. And the first thing you come in this river, boom! There's this huge bar that's three foot deep. There's reds absolutely all over this bar. This happens on the moon. Why on the moon does it happen? 
you're not really catching them that good offshore. All of a sudden, it's October. All this, all the stuff offshore, I just told you, is not working out. This is where you find the inshore stuff. They want those eggs to go all the way back up here into this marsh when they spawn. On that incoming tide, the top of that tide, especially is when you'll catch them because they're all over the bar and they're wanting their, they're wanting their eggs to be carried as far up as possible to keep those fry when they fry out to be as safe as they can be and still only a small percentage survive. But they're going to get as close as they can inshore to something that's going to carry those eggs up. And that's why it's good to find an inshore area too that may lead to marsh or just the inland in general to carry for those eggs to carry up when they spawn out. And they're just going to be males and females all over bars like this inshore that have a good ocean feed like this channel shows here. And that's just how they operate as well. Got to have a good channel on three sides of this bar. You look at that. There's deep water on three sides. This is like, that's the ultimate peninsula for reds right there. And that's the kind of stuff you're looking for. So in part two of this, I'm going to move a little bit south and show you guys some more stuff. You know, St. Augustine and all the way to the Cape. We'll show you some more stuff in the second one. But uh, You guys let me know what you think in the comments. Know what channels and areas or islands would you want me to do or or inlets just let me know you know you guys have a good one hope you got something out of it you guys be safe fish on